Hello, my most amazing artist. I hope everybody's having an awesome day. I'm super stoked about today's activity because we are going to be creating a salt dough solar system. If for some reason you don't wanna make the salt dough clay or perhaps you don't have the ingredients, it's okay because you can use whatever kind of clay that you happen to have in your home. Play-Doh would be a great alternative or something else that you could use. But let's go ahead and say our art class catchphrase before we go too much further. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I got what it takes. I am an artist. Awesome, a big shout out to our sponsors, Ticonderoga and our friends at art to remember Ticonderoga does an amazing job of always supplying me with all of the supplies that I use. Crayons, the best paper, the best construction paper, and hello, the best pencils. Thank you, Ticonderoga, for always supporting Art Class with Cassie. And also, Art to Remember. I don't know about you, but my artwork is really starting to pile up because we've been making so much. Did you know that you can create a gallery where everybody can see your artwork online? You can do that with Art to Remember. Be sure and check them out. It's totally free and absolutely amazing. All right, let's talk about the supplies you're going to need today for your solar system. Isn't that awesome? We're going to be needing a piece of cardboard. You could have a longer piece of cardboard. <laughs> I just noticed you now see that this might be what your hands are gonna be looking like at the end of art class. You'll also need a half a cup of flour, a quarter cup of water, and a quarter cup of salt. That's what we'll be using to make the clay. To add color to the clay, it would be great if you had food coloring, red, yellow, and blue. Any of these supplies that you don't have, as I share with you how to go about making your solar system, I'll tell you other things that you can use instead. To add a little bit of color to your cardboard, you might wanna grab some crayons and a marker. We'll actually be using that first. So get your cardboard and crayons ready first, and then we'll dive into making our clay and our planets. Before we do, pinkies out, people. <clears throat> I pinky promise to do my best to finish what I start and have a positive attitude. Air kiss, Mwah! All right, grab that cardboard, get those crayons, and let's get started. Begin your solar system. You might wanna start by changing the color of your cardboard. You can do that with crayons, markers, and you could do it a couple of ways, especially if you're using crayons. If you're using crayons, you could do something called a rubbing. A rubbing is when you take the side of the crayon lay it on your board and just rub. That's how it got its name, rubbing. The cool thing is, is that when you do a rubbing, you always reveal the texture. So there's this great texture that cardboard has of a group of lines. If you like that texture, then you can go ahead and continue your rubbing using a variety of colors that you think would look great for your solar system, or you could switch to regular coloring. And when you're coloring, you'll still be revealing the texture of the cardboard, but you'll be able to fill in some of those spaces later. I'm just using a variety of colors. I'm coloring on a diagonal, meaning my hand is going diagonally, but this is your solar system. You use whatever colors you like and fill in this board, this piece of cardboard, any way you want to. When you're finished, then you'll need to grab your supplies for creating the salt dough clay. Let me tell you what those supplies are. You'll need a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of salt, a half a cup of flour. Today, we're going to be making the clay colorful. You could do this a couple of ways. If you don't have food coloring, which is what I will be using, then you can just paint your planets with paint. Watercolor would work great. Or you could use markers to color them in once they're dry. That's if you don't have food coloring. If you do have food coloring, we will be changing the color of the clay today to create planets like this. 
If you'd rather use something like Play-Doh or any other clay that you have, if you do not feel like creating your own clay, that's fine too. All right, my board is finished. I'm going to go ahead, move this out of the way and grab my clay making supplies. Let's begin by making our salt dough clay. I'm going to start with a quarter cup of water. So I'll go ahead, get that poured into my measuring cup. There we go, pouring it into my bowl. Now my measuring cup is going to be wet, so I'm gonna go ahead, wipe that out. So that way the dry ingredients that I'm about to add don't stick. So I'm just gonna dry this out a little bit. And now I'm adding my quarter cup of salt. Same amount as the water. Come on out, salt. And I always like to shake, shake it but don't break it, shake my measuring cup to make sure that it's nice and level. Looks good to me. Now I'll pour that in. Some of it did stick, so I didn't do a very good job wiping it out, so I'll just use my little spatula and get the rest of that out. And now I'm going to add a half a cup, that would be double of what I just used of salt and water, half a cup of flour. And then I will mix all of my ingredients. If you don't have food coloring, then you will stop right here after all of your ingredients are mixed. If you do, then you'll follow along with me for the next step. I had a little too much flour, so let's go ahead and make sure I have the right amount. That looks good. And now I'll add that in. Okay, now I will start to stir it up. And if you've made salt dough clay before, then this for you is the usual routine. If you've been following along with me, we make salt dough clay almost every week. I love it because it only takes three ingredients. If you make anything with the clay that you stick to cardboard, you can just let it dry. It'll take maybe one or two days to dry completely. If you make something that stands alone, meaning it's not attached to cardboard, you might wanna pop it in the oven with mom or dad or grandma's help. Make sure that the oven is at about 250 degrees and let it sit in there for about 30 minutes, but do not do that without the help of an adult. Okay, now I've kind of got the ingredients as good as I can get it before I have to use my hands to knead or squish together all of the ingredients to create a dough. And it's this time that you'll start to notice if you had the exact measuring right. Like right now, I can tell my clay's a little crumbly, so I might need to add a pinch more water. But before I do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish kneading the dough. And yep, it seems a tiny bit dry. Here's the deal. If you have to add water, only add a tiny, tiny bit at a time. Otherwise, it'll get too sticky. So I just added a little bit. I didn't even give an exact measurement because it's kind of like something you have to judge on your own, you're eyeballing it. Once you've got your dough where it's nice and soft, then we'll need to divide it into three equal pieces. All right, so now mine feels pretty good. Feels pretty good, it's a little dry, but I think as I work with it, I can add water then. Now let's go ahead and divide this into three equal pieces. So I've got my ball of clay. I'm just going to go ahead and pinch a piece off here, set it there, maybe pinch another piece off and let's see. They all look to be about equal. I could really make sure by rolling them into a sphere, if one is big and the other is small, I'll take from the big one and give to the smaller ones. All right, now, if you don't have food coloring, you can just pause right here. You don't even have to divide it into three pieces. If you do, we're going to make the primary colors. We're going to make one that's blue, one that's red. I don't have yellow food coloring, so I'm substituting it out for liquid watercolor paint. So I don't want to stain my hands, and food coloring can do that. If you have gloves to wear, you should. Go ahead when you have your gloves on and flatten your clay so that you've got a slab. And I'm gonna take my food coloring and just give it a couple of polka dots of food coloring. Again, this could stain your hand. It's a very concentrated or dark color. So you wanna make sure you do this step carefully if you don't have gloves. Fold it inward. 
pinching it closed and now you're just going to start squishing but if you see any of that dye keep those fingers away try to keep your fingers clean and if you do get any food coloring on them you might want to rinse them or have a towel on hand I did get a little on me, that's okay. I don't mind having hands that are a little bit colorful, but I know some of you might not. All right, so there, it's starting to change color. Now I can start rolling it and really playing with it, massaging that color into my clay until it turns nice and blue. If your clay is too light in color, if it's a light blue, Think about how you can problem solve and fix that. If it's too light, you could add more food coloring. I think mine's a really beautiful color blue. You can see my hands are a little bit colorful too. That's okay. And now I'm just kind of rolling it, playing with it and blending all the color in. Awesome. When you have your blue one finished, let's go ahead and do the same steps to the red and the yellow. Now that we have our primary colors of clay created, let's go ahead and begin working on our solar system. There's so many different ways you can lay out your planets and your sun and your solar system. There's the way where you could lay them out all out in a row, but my piece of cardboard's a little bit too short for that. So I'm going to be staggering my planets, but I am going to make sure that I get them in their very special order. Let's begin with the sun. I'm going to take a piece of clay, move my board out of the way, and we're going to be rolling some coils with clay. Notice I have a piece of paper here so that I don't end up getting clay on my table or on the counter. So make sure you have a piece of paper or something underneath like a good old fashioned messy mat. Take a piece of clay that's about half the size of your yellow piece because the sun is huge. And with that piece of clay, I'm going to roll a sphere. And now I'm going to roll a coil, but look at my clay. It's starting to crack. If that happens to you, all you have to do is add water. So I'm getting a little finger full of water, just adding that to my thirsty clay. There we go, and now I'm just gonna massage or work that water into the clay to get it nice and soft again. Now let's see if I can roll a coil without it cracking. There we go. So now you know, if that happens to you, you just need to add a little bit of water, not a lot, or else it'll become too sticky and work that water into the clay. Once you've got that finished, let's roll this coil. So to roll my coil, I begin with a sphere and then I roll up and down my hand a little bit. Now I'm gonna place the clay on the table. When I roll this coil, I'm gonna spread it out a little bit, but then I'm gonna only roll the ends, and here's why. We're trying to make a coil that looks like a worm that swallowed too much lunch. It had way too much to eat for lunch, so it should have a nice lump right here. So if your coil is falling apart as you're rolling it, Ball it back up and try it again. If it's crumbly, add a little bit more water. You're going to have to do some problem solving today as you're creating your solar system. Once you've got your worm that looks like it had too much lunch, put it at the edge of your cardboard and then you're going to proceed to squish it down flat. So I'm gonna maybe stretch the clay a little bit so it can reach the top and the bottom. There we go, I just pulled on it gently. And if it breaks, you can always ball it up and try it again. And now I'm squishing down the clay. Can you figure out why I made my coil have that little lump in the middle? So that I could create the arch that is half of the sun. So right here through the middle, I'm just pressing it out a little bit more. So it has that arch like a sun. Your clay should stick to your board, but if it's sticking to your fingers more than it's sticking to your board, you might wanna put a little bit of glue on your board. It should stick by itself, but earlier today, my Pluto fell right off. And though I had to use a little bit of glue just to attach it. All right, I'm just gonna squish this out. There we go. This took a little bit of practice for me, and I know that with a little bit of practice, you will get it just right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the other side nice and straight. Okay, do you know which planet is the closest to the sun? Which planet 
It's Mercury. It's also kind of a small planet. When I was looking at the colors of the planet, it's kind of a gray, but I don't really have a gray to make that with my clay. So I'm going to make it a yellowish green. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna take a piece of yellow that's about the size of an, a little bitty M&M. One of those little tiny runt M&Ms at the bottom of the bag. So it's a little tiny tiny guy. Roll it into a sphere. And now I'll take the same size of blue. So I'm just gonna pinch off and roll that into a sphere. Now I have two spheres of clay. I want to blend these colors. Here's my trick for blending colors. Roll a coil. If it crumbles, add more water. Roll another coil. This is my trick for blending clay. You might wanna try it or you could do your own trick. Now twist the two pieces of clay together as if they are wrapping around like a candy cane and then roll it into a sphere again and let's see. Oh, look at that. The colors are already starting to swirl and blend. If you want them to keep blending, take both pieces together, roll a coil, twist, twist, twist until the colors really blend and then roll it into a ball or a sphere. And well, Mike keeps rolling away. Now that I have that, I'm gonna squish it flat and look for the most beautiful side. Ooh, this side doesn't look as pretty as that one. I'm going to put mercury close to the sun and squish it down just a little bit so that it is one of the smaller planets in my solar system. Now, if your hands start to bother you, it's probably good to have a nice damp towel on hand so you can wipe your hands. Do you know which planet comes next? It's the planet that sometimes is called the Earth's twin because they're the same size, Venus. So Venus is yellow. So I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow about the size of a regular M&M, not a runt this time, and red, same size. And I'm going to use that same method of blending my colors. Roll a sphere, roll a coil. If the clay cracks, add some water. If I'm going too fast, you know you could always press the pause button to catch up with me. There we go, I added a little bit of water. If I'm going too slow, you know you can always speed me up. All right, there we go, there's my yellow. And I'll do that same candy cane trick where I twist. You might end up with some extra clay when you're finished working. If you twisted this around and slid this onto a pencil and let it dry on a pencil, when you take it off, you'd have a really beautiful bead. That's something to think about if you have extra clay. All right, I'll roll a coil. Ooh, the colors are already starting to mix. I want them to mix even more. So I'll just twist, twist, twist. Roll this into a sphere, squish it into a slab, and let's see which side has the prettier swirls of gases. <gasps> Ooh, I like this one. I see even a little heart right there. Okay, now I don't have enough room to put all of these planets in a row, so I think I'll stagger Venus above a little bit. Oops, if it sticks too much to you, just press it down a little into the board. Venus is bigger than Earth. So, I'm sorry, it's bigger than Mercury. It's the same size as Earth. Speaking of Earth, guess which one is the third rock from the sun? Earth. Let's work on Earth next. So for Earth, you're going to need green for the land and blue for the water. But look, we don't have green. That means we have to make it. Go ahead and pinch off a piece of yellow that's the size of one of those small M&Ms, those little runts at the bottom of the bag, and the same size piece of blue. Then let's go ahead and blend these two colors together. I'm gonna try a trick of rolling two coils at once and twist. Now, I want these two colors blended completely, meaning I don't wanna see any color swirls. I want this to be completely green. And look, it's getting there. I saw a little bit of swirls. I'm just rolling a coil and then rolling a sphere. 
If it's too dry, add water and look at that. I've got green for my land. Now I'll get some blue that's about the same size for my water. Okay, now this one we will blend, but we won't blend completely. We want to be able to see the difference between the land and the water. If one coils a little longer than the other, it's okay. You could always pinch off the extra clay. Let's try to blend this, but not too much. So I'm only gonna probably do it once. Uh-oh, crumbly clay. I'm thirsty. Give me some water. You're mostly made out of water, planet Earth. What's your problem? All right, let's see. Ooh, I can see a lot of water. I think there's Nashville, Tennessee. There's where I am, right there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stagger maybe this one. But when I think about scale or size, I know I have to make planet Earth about the same size as Venus. Bigger than Mercury, about the same size as Venus. What's the planet that people call the red planet? It's the fourth planet from the sun, Mars. All right, so Mars is made most, is um, mostly a red planet, but I wanna make it so that I can also have a little bit of orange in there too. So I've got a, um, I've got a piece of clay the size of an M&M. Maybe this one will be a little smaller, but about half that size because Mars is not as big as Venus and Earth. Okay, trying my trick. This time I'm gonna squish them both together. Let's see how that does with blending. That worked pretty good too. Sometimes it's fun to experiment. Try something new, come up with your own method or way of doing things. All right, let's see how this looks after I roll it and squish it. Ooh, that looks pretty cool. Now Mars is bigger than Mercury. It's the fourth planet from the sun, so I'm staggering it fourth away, squishing it so it's not quite as big as Venus and Earth, but bigger than Mercury. I'm thinking about scale, the scale of my planet. Speaking of scale, which planet's the biggest? Jupiter. Jupiter's my favorite planet because it's so stinking big. So this time I have to use a piece of clay that's about the size of a peanut M&M. No little runts this time and not quite as much yellow. I've got to save a little bit of yellow because I still have to make a couple of more planets. Okay, let's go ahead. One thing that Jupiter has is a big orange spot. It's mostly made up of these swirled gases going all over this beautiful planet. So let's go ahead and see if we can make some of those swirls. Oh, if your clay breaks, it's okay. You already know why, it's thirsty. I'm gonna go ahead and give it some more water. Now, when you're finished with this, I just let mine dry. You can see that the color does get a little lighter when it dries, but it still looks pretty cool. And it has a great texture. Texture is another element of art and it also helps to really show the texture of the planets. Okay, let's see. Ooh, that looks cool, but is it gonna be big enough? I might actually add a little bit more yellow because as I'm looking, I'm thinking that planet's supposed to be the biggest. I don't know if I used enough clay. All right, I'll try rolling it again and squishing it into a slab. I think I'll stagger it right down here. I'm gonna really press this one pretty firmly and stretch it out because this is one of the bigger planets. If you didn't use enough clay, you saw what I did. I just added a little bit more. Now we're up for the planet that's one of my other favorites, Saturn, because it has rings. I think it's cool that it has rings around it. So I'm going to be creating that one with a lot of yellow. I think what I'm gonna do is take this and pinch it right in half. This is all I have left of my yellow and some red. Um, Saturn and Jupiter are nearly the same size. Jupiter's just a little bit bigger. We already know what to do here, so I don't have to make it quite as big. Add some water to this and try rolling my coil again. See if that helps. Perfect. Sweet, all right, here I go, twirling these around. Then we have to use 
blue clay to make the ring. So I will be rolling a coil for the ring. It can be a little tricky to roll a coil that long, but I will be able to show you some tricks. Okay, so I'm gonna stagger my Jupiter up here and I'm gonna leave some room around it so that I have enough space for the ring. So I'm just kind of stretching this clay out, making it nice and big, nearly as big as Saturn, or as Jupiter. There we go, woo, check out those cool designs. Now let's make that ring. So I'm gonna use some of my blue clay, add a little water if I need to, go ahead and roll it, and then use your mat. And you'll actually wanna roll a skinny long coil. Sometimes those can be hard to make because the clay might break. If it does, add water, roll it into a sphere, Try it again. Notice I'm going slowly and checking my coil to make sure it's the same thickness. When I add my ring, I'll start on one side, press it into the mat for the cardboard, go around to the front, and if I'm going fast, just pause, just press pause. I had a little too much, I'm gonna pinch that off and bring it around. Now I have to press it a little bit in place so that it stays on the board. Yay! Okay, now that little bit of clay, or you can pinch some blue clay, I will use to make, I'm gonna grab a little bit more, the planet called Uranus. So I'm gonna take some blue, maybe just a little yellow. I only have this much left, so I think I'll take half of it because I won't need much for Pluto. And then roll and roll. Now some people, don't think that Pluto is a part of our solar system. Some people think it's just a, um, a moon. You can still include it, but you don't have to. I love that cute little planet at the end of our solar system. I'm still saying it's a planet, so I'm going to include it. All right, now I've got this one. Uranus is a little bit like the size of Earth, but smaller. So I have to think about that scale. Think about where it's going to be. Ooh, I love the swirls. Guys, we only have two more to do. Let's try Neptune, which is mostly purple. So I'm gonna take some blue and some red. It looks like I'm gonna have some extra clay. So be thinking about what you could do with that extra clay. If you want to save it for later, you could always roll it in some saran wrap and keep it in the fridge. All right, twisting this up. And let's see what we get. If you really wanna blend it to get a good purple, you'll just have to keep rolling and twisting to get that color in there. Let's see if I can get that a little bit more. Oh, I'm starting to see purple. Now, by the way, if you don't see purple, if it's too red, try adding more blue. If it's too blue, try adding more red. Oh yeah, I see a beautiful purple there. Set it here, and then last but not least, I'm gonna make sure it's about the same size as Uranus, because those two are about the same size, is Pluto, the teeny tiny little baby planet. So I'm gonna add a little bit of blue to the sky. Now, if you have extra clay, beads could be made, you could make other planets or asteroids, you could make a completely different work of art. You are the artist, so you get to decide Let's go ahead and add this last guy. Wow, right there at the edge of the solar system, teeny weeny. When you're finished, you could wait for your clay to dry. You could show the path that the planets take around the sun. We know Mercury was first, and I'm making a curved line that echoes the same curve of the sun. Venus is the second planet. Notice how my marker hops over the planets and then continues the same curve as the sun. There's planet Earth. Next up was Mars, and you could always go back and label this if you wanted to, but you don't have to. I got a little marker and I wrote the names of each planet. There's Saturn, oh, Jupiter, there's Saturn. There we go, squeeze that marker in between. And then I could add the planet Uranus's path that it takes around the sun, Neptune, and if you added Pluto. Yay! 
Hey guys, this was so much fun. If you enjoyed creating a salt dough solar system with me, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and subscribe because new videos like this are added almost every day. See you real soon.